Hello everyone, hope everyone is doing good. Uh, today we will be discussing about interaction of X-rays with matter. So uh, coming to the introduction, uh, everything that has mass is known as matter and uh, X-rays were discovered by Ron Jen in 1895. So remember these dates, sometimes uh, examiners are very keen about dates and then uh, X-rays are electromagnetic radiation and uh, you know the production of X-rays from the X-ray tube. So, uh, we will be discussing about what will happen when an X-ray hits a uh, human body and what type of interaction takes place inside this human body and then how does they come out of the human body. So, uh, what does the human body consist of uh, or the uh, tissue, body tissues consist of, uh, the basic elements. Uh, the basic elements in terms uh, goes to molecules which does have atoms. So, when it comes to atoms, uh, the basic atom does have a nucleus at the center with the protons and the neutrons and the electrons revolving around it uh, with the orbits. So, uh, uh, as we know, 90% of uh, an atom consists of empty space. So, there is 90% chance that the X-ray might enter uh, the atom and come out go without any interaction. So, but you have uh, n number of uh, atoms, so it is not possible uh, to come out of the body without interaction. So, 91% undergo interaction of some kind, whereas 9%, exactly 9% of X-rays go inside the human body and come out without any interaction. So, without interaction there are 9% of electrons and the other interactions that we see are coherent scattering, photoelectric absorption and Compton scattering. And uh, coming to the first one, the coherent scattering, uh, one more thing is uh, apart from these three uh, types of interaction, you have something known as pair production. I uh, will discuss about this pair production at the end of this session. So, uh, moving on to the first type of uh, uh, interaction, it is known as uh, coherent scattering. It is also known as Rayleigh, classical or elastic scattering. Uh, it accounts for 7% of the total number of interactions and it does not uh, actually uh, have any impact on the formation of uh, the image on the X-ray. So, it occurs when low energy photon interacts with the whole uh, atom. So, what happens here is, uh, see, basically uh, from the X-ray tube, you have a number of uh, X-rays coming out. So, not all the X-rays will have the same intensity or the same amount of energy. One X-ray might have higher energy, one X-ray might have low energy. So, uh, when a low energy X-ray comes and hits an atom, uh, in an atom, uh, the outermost electron, then this kind of uh, interaction takes place, that is the coherent scattering. So, what happens in a coherent scattering is, when the low energy photon comes and hits, it interacts with the uh, atom and then there will be excitation of this atom and cessation of photon. So, what they are telling is, so you have, uh, you have orbits like this. When this incident photon comes and hits this electron, this incident X-ray transfers all its energy to this electron and this electron excites to the outer orbit. This is known as excitation of atom and then immediately the basic tendency of the atom is to fill the inner orbits first. So, what happens is this electron which has come from the lower orbit goes back to its orbit. So, in this, in this uh, transaction there will be release of energy. So, this energy is released as a new X-ray. So, uh, in a coherent scattering what happens is uh, there will be incident X-ray which will be hitting the outermost electron and then uh, the excited electron comes back to its original orbit and there will be ex release of energy. So, what happens is the incident X-ray will stop, there will be no, in, uh, there will be cessation of this incident X-ray and there will be formation of a new X-ray uh, with the same amount of energy in most of the cases but uh, the secondary photon is emitted in different direction than the path of the incident photon. So, very little energy for the photons to reach the film. The X-rays which are created in this uh, interaction have very less energy and they do not fog the film. Okay. Okay. Uh, 
when it comes to photoelectric absorption it consists of 27% of the interaction it forms 27% of the interactions it is very critical in diagnostic imaging uh, it is the it is the primary contributor to the image so what happens here is photon photon interacts with the inner orbit electron so you have this uh, inner orbit electron over here the incident photon comes and hits this inner orbit electron it it what it does is it throws away this electron so you have a free electron roaming inside the body so there is a vacancy over here this vacancy as you know the tendency of the natural uh, atom to fill the inner orbits first the uh, the electron in the higher orbit comes and fills this so there is energy released from this uh, interaction and then this is the new x-ray formed so in both coherent and photoelectric absorption we have a new x-ray that is coming after the interaction but in case of compton uh, there will be no new x-ray formed i'll we'll discuss is, we'll discuss about that and then uh, so uh, the kinetic energy of the recoil electron what is the recoil electron so initially when the x-ray comes and hits the inner orbit electron this goes out of the atom this is known as recoil electron the energy possessed by this electron is equal to energy of the incident photon that is the incident x-ray minus binding energy of the electron what is the binding energy of the electron the amount of energy that is required to remove or to hold the electron in its particular orbit so the resultant photons are of low energy and are absorbed within the patient and do not fog the film in case of atoms with low atomic number the binding energy is low and the recoil electron receives most of the energy uh, the secondary electron travels short distance before they give up their energy through the secondary ionization what does this mean so in case of low atomic number what happens is the energy required to remove this electron is less so most of the energy will be in the form of will go to the new x-ray form so that helps in fogging the film whereas if the atomic number is high what happens is uh, most of the energy is consumed to remove this electron out of the orbit so uh, that creates a low energy x-ray after the interaction which doesn't fog the film so in an uh, bone the atomic number is high so you have low energy x-rays coming out of this interaction which doesn't fog the film but in case of soft tissue you, the atomic number is low the exit photon or x-ray has higher highest uh, more amount of energy that helps in fogging the film creating difference between the bone and the soft tissue yeah and if you can see here the probability of photon being absorbed by the bone is 6.5 times greater than that of the soft tissue so what happens here is uh, in a bone uh, the x-ray is absorbed but in a soft tissue uh, there are uh, 6.5 times higher chance there is 6.5 times higher chance that this x-ray will go and hit the film so that creates a difference between the bone and the soft tissue uh, compton scattering accounts for 57% of the interactions so how does compton scattering takes place uh, we have this atom over here we have this electron rotating in the outermost orbit so this incident x-ray comes and hits this electron and there will be transfer of some energy from this x-ray to this electron to kick it out so there will be some uh, energy that is transferred from this uh, x-ray to this electron and then what happens is after this energy transfer or interaction this incident x-ray will move in a different direction so it is simple this incident x-ray comes and hits an electron and then there is alteration in the direction of this incident x-ray so in this case there is no formation of a new x-ray but in case of compton scattering no in case of uh, coherent scattering and also in case of photoelectric absorption the first x-ray which hits the atom ceases or doesn't exist after the interaction and there is formation of a new x-ray in those cases but in case of compton scattering there will be no new x-ray formed uh, the same x-ray uh, will hit and interacts with this atom and there will be change in the direction of this x-ray so uh, when you see uh, the x-ray uh, the energy of the scattered photon or the scattered uh, x-ray it will be the energy of the incident photon minus the ki kinetic energy gained by this electron plus binding energy so what they are telling is simple 
the energy of this x-ray is equal to the energy of this x-ray minus the energy that is gained by this kinetic uh, by, by this electron and the binding energy of this electron. So, so uh, the probability of Compton interaction is directly proportional to the electron density of absorber. So, there, if there is a high, higher density, uh, there is higher chance of Compton interaction. When, there are, when the electron density is less, there is less chance of Compton interaction. You can see uh, the density of bone is much more higher. Now, we have uh, 1 million x-rays that is around 10 lakhs x-rays that goes into the human body. So, totally how many number of interaction takes place? So, roughly if you see it is about 2.2 million or 22 lakhs. So, how does this takes place? So, once an x-ray goes and have this coherent or Compton scattering, there will be new x-ray formed. This new x-ray can either interact as Compton, coherent or photoelectric absorption. So, in this way, when there is an uh, incident number of 1 million, it goes and interacts and there will be uh, other interaction taking place after uh, the formation of uh, the second x-ray after the first interaction and in total you have uh, more than double uh, interaction taking place than the incident x-rays. Uh, okay, uh, this table just you need to have a brief uh, outlook on how uh, the interaction takes place and then moving on to the conclusion, uh, okay, most of the interaction occurs through Compton scattering and then uh, when X-ray beam travels through matter, its intensity is reduced due to photoelectric absorption and con Compton scattering and it is known as beam attenuation. So, we will have uh, uh, um, some MCQs for discussing today. Uh, the percentage of X-rays do not interact with the matter, you know this, I think it is 9 percent. Which of the following contribute to the formation of image? Uh, the coherent scattering has the least uh, effect on formation of the image. The content does have in effect, the photoelectric absorption also does have, so the answer will be both B and C. And in which of the following new photon is not formed? As I mentioned, in both coherent and photoelectric absorption, there will be formation of uh, new X-ray. Only in case of Compton scattering, you do not have a new X-ray formed. So, which of the following type of interaction is mostly seen? Uh, we know this, uh, it is Compton scattering which accounts for 57 percent of the interactions. And which, when does photoelectric absorption takes place? A incident photon reacts with inner orbit electron, yes. Uh, photoelectric absorption does takes place uh, when the incident photon reacts with inner orbit electron. Okay, thank you. Hope you uh, like this session. Uh, we will create many videos like this. Uh, if you want any particular topic for discussion, please do mention in the comment section. Thank you.